Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on-feet video of the Nike Hypervenom X Finale Turf Shoes in the latest Electro Flare colorway. Now inside the box, all you get are the shoes themselves. They do not come with any extras. So let me get these guys out of the box really quickly and we'll take a closer look at the $100 price point model in the Hypervenom X line, the Finale. Now this is a really interesting shoe in that it really could have been the top end model. And if you're a fan of the first generation Hypervenom Phantom, this is probably what you're looking for because this is kind of an evolution of that first model, at least more so than the actual Phantom 2 ended up being. So in today's video, we are of course going to take a closer look at the colorway itself. We're gonna go over tech specs, performance details, take a look at the weight, as well as take a look at how these things fit and feel on feet. So if you are interested in learning more, please stick around, watch the entire video. If you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, be sure to check out the review page on my website. That'll be the very first link down below in the description of this video. On that page, you will find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes where you'll be able to pick these guys up below their normal $100 retail price. So again, if you're interested in a pair, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. And with that being said, let's get right into the review. To start things off, let's take a closer look at the colorway. Now, being that this is part of the Electro Flare Pack, the main color for the upper is Hyper Grape Purple, which of course you find across the entire Hypervenom line. Now, on this particular shoe, it looks really good because you have the texturing from the Nike Skin Upper. It has kind of like a semi-metallic look to it, and it has a color changing effect as well. So, depending on how the light hits the shoe, it looks purple, but there's also kind of a light blue glow about it as well, which just looks really, really unique. Big fan of this particular shade of purple. Now, unlike like a lot of the Electro Flare Pack Hypervenoms, this does not have the paint splatter graphic. Instead, you have a combination of black and neon yellow as accent colors. You have the standard outline of neon yellow in the Nike swoosh at the front, whereas the back heel Nike swoosh is actually solid neon yellow, which is pretty cool. And then of course you have matte black in the heel, the back of the shoe, as well as the tongue, the laces, and the size of the actual um, shoe itself are also black in color. And then you of course, have the Volt Yellow in the actual Flywire cables peeking through here where they attach to the laces, which is really, really cool. A nice little accent and just a very interesting looking shoe in general. A lot more like the original Hypervenom than the current one. Black heel liner, Volt Yellow insole, and then of course the entire midsole and outsole, aside from the Nike swoosh at the bottom, is solid white in color. So overall, Really, really good looking shoe in my opinion. I quite like how they look. Let me know your opinions down below in the comment section. Do you like how these look? Why or why not? And with that being said, let's move on to the tech specs so we can learn a little bit more about the overall performance. As far as performance is concerned, I'm a big fan of the Hypervenom X Finale. What's unique about this shoe in comparison to all of the current Hypervenom and Hypervenom X models is that this doesn't feature the same type of upper as the current generation Hypervenoms. It actually features a similar Nike skin upper construction to what we saw on the original Hypervenom Phantom, which some people will really, really enjoy because I know not everyone's a huge fan of the new Hypervenom Nike Skin Upper, including myself. So this is kind of a modification of what we saw from the first generation Hypervenom. Instead of being a honeycomb mesh base, this has a slightly different pattern. It's kind of like a zigzag crisscross pattern, but the same idea still is there. It feels pretty much identical as well. Just has a slightly different look because of the different pattern. So you have a mesh base for the actual synthetic itself. You have a top layer of Nike Skin, which is a polyurethane layer, fused directly on top. You have a fused on support layer on the inside, which I can actually show you right there. That's on both sides of the shoe, as well as in the toe box area. And then, unlike the original Hypervenom Phantom, you have the added structure of the Flywire cables that are positioned in pretty much the exact same places that you're gonna find on the top end Phantom 2 finish, as well as the Hypervenom X Proximo model. So that's a nice little addition that does add significant amounts of structure in comparison to the original Hypervenom Phantom 1 that did have some issues with kind of rollover and just general instability in the upper, especially once you got some wear time and it started to stretch a little bit. So that does help the issue, although I still will make the argument that these aren't quite as responsive 
as the new Nike skin uppers um, are. Uh, in terms of actual touch on the ball, they are thin, but you get that slight amount of padding as well from, of course, the padded mesh layer that makes up the core of the upper itself. It's flexible. It has that little bit of an ability to stretch, mainly in the forefoot and toe box area because these flywire cables will actually prevent the stretching of the upper. What's nice about the flywire is, again, it runs from the base of the sole into the lacing system itself. So when you pull the laces tight, it pulls on those flywire cables, which are visible here at the top, which is kind of cool looking and um, like I said helps to hold the midfoot in place and prevents the upper from stretching at all so again you get a more responsive feel than you otherwise would have without that little bit of extra support that really doesn't add any bulk to the shoe uh, no ACC on this particular shoe um, and it has kind of a smooth texturing to it overall despite the actual texture from the upper that you don't really notice when you're actually making contact with the ball itself um, there is an extra layer of polyurethane here running along the actual toe box area it's kind of difficult to see you guys can see the outline right there because it's purple on purple but it is in fact there so there is a reinforcement layer in the high wear zone area of the shoe uh, laces are off center like you're going to find on all the other hypervenom models the tongue itself is kind of like a perforated mesh material um, pretty flimsy but it actually suits this particular shoe quite well um, and the tongue itself is elasticated to the bottom of the shoe on both sides, which is kind of an interesting little feature. Not necessarily something that needs to be there, but it does do a good job once your foot is inside the shoe of holding the tongue in place and preventing it from dropping down to either side. So that's kind of a nice little feature that you wouldn't really know about the shoe unless you actually um, put them on for the first time. And again, you do get the fused on support cage on the inside. That's on both sides of the inside of the upper, as you guys can see. Um, moving on to the rear of the shoe, you are gonna find that it does have an internal plastic heel counter, as you would expect. Standard low cut, as opposed to being mid cut like the Proximo uh, model. Uh, it's got a s kind of smooth mesh liner on the inside with a decent amount of padding. It's not particularly slick when you put your foot inside, so heel slippage is not an issue. I know that can concern some people um, when you do have a mesh liner, but I didn't have any issues with the Hypervenom X Finale. The insole is fully removable. It features a mesh liner on top. Um, no perforations. It's made from an ortholite material. It's the same insole you're going to find on all the top end Hypervenom models. So that is included at the $100 price point, which is pretty nice. And then moving on to the midsole. It's kind of the uh, medium ground when you're talking about the new Nike X models. The Magista X line provides the most significant cushioning. The Mercurial X line provides the most minimalist cushioning. Whereas this one is, like I said, kind of right there in the middle. It's a Phylon foam midsole. It's got some decent thickness through the heel and midfoot and does kind of slim out a little bit as you get closer to the forefoot and toe box area. So you get decent amounts of underfoot cushioning, but nothing too crazy. Of course, you do sit a little bit higher off the ground than what you will find from the Mercurial X line, but it still is a fairly low to the ground type of feel. And the cushioning, because it's a Phylon foam as opposed to Lunar Lawn, like you're gonna find from the Magista X models, it's not quite as kind of uh, mushy when you're stepping down. You get a nice firm kind of responsive type of feel from the cushion setup itself. So if that's something that you were worried about, it's not something that I would concern myself too much with. Uh, moving on to the outsole, this of course is the turf variation of the shoe. There is an indoor variation as well, which you can get in all of the colorways. So depending on what type of plane surface you're gonna be using them on, you can go for turf or indoor. That's why they make uh, both of them an option. Uh, you can see that you do have this extended rubber lip with the nylon stitching going around the toe box as well. So sole separation and again, the high wear zones of the shoe shouldn't be too much of a concern with this particular model. Model. And as far as the outsole is concerned, the traction pattern, it's pretty much the same across the entire Nike X line, with, regardless of whether it's a Hypervenom X, Magista X, or Mercurial X. They all feel and perform pretty much the same because, like I said, they are pretty much the same. So if you're playing on turf, that kind of rough carpet material, this will get the job done. You can also use this on artificial grass, which is the um, kind of plastic blades of grass with the rubber pellets, although it won't provide quite as aggressive traction as an AG shoe would. Um, so just keep that in mind. And again, if you're playing on indoor, street soccer, concrete, asphalt, any kind of hard flat surface, the indoor variation is definitely what you're looking for. So that's pretty much it in terms of tech specs or what you need to know regarding the performance of the Hypervenom X Finale. If you're looking for an indoor Hypervenom shoe that is as close as possible to the original 
top of the line Hypervenom Phantom, this is it. In terms of weight, the Hypervenom X Finale is pretty light, no real complaints in that department. So I'm gonna weigh this pair for you today in real time using this scale. Keep in mind this is a brand new pair in a size nine US. We're gonna throw them on the scale and you can see that they weigh in at 8.9 ounces, the equivalent of 253 grams. And for a turf shoe that has as much underfoot cushioning as this one does, uh, under the nine ounce mark is pretty impressive. That's definitely not the norm for most turf shoes out there. Um, again, especially one as significant and as comfortable as this one is. So uh, the indoor model will weigh a little bit less in the same size. That's also very normal when you have the same shoe available in two different sole variations. Indoor is always a little bit lighter. Turf is always a little bit more just because there's more rubber to the actual sole itself. But again, it really depends on what type of surface you're gonna be using them on. Weight shouldn't be the deciding factor whether you're choosing between indoor or turf. And again, if you're just looking for a fairly lightweight pair of indoor or turf shoes, that don't feel overly flimsy and overly thin on your feet, you're definitely gonna get that from the Hypervenom X Finale. All right, so here is a look at the Hypervenom X Finales on feet. On my left foot, I have the stock black laces that come with the shoes. And on my right foot, I have a pair of black with neon yellow dots SR4U replacement laces. If you're interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. You find a direct link to that website down below in the description of this video. Now in terms of how these things fit and feel on feet, they're entirely different from the rest of the current Hypervenom models. Again, like I mentioned earlier in the video, because it is more of a first generation Nike skin upper, it feels a lot like the first generation Hypervenom Phantom. Soft, flexible, and just really, really comfortable out of the box. The flywire reinforcements through the midfoot really do change how this shoe feels through the midfoot area of the shoe. It really helps to lock things down and it just has a more secure sensation overall. It's not exactly the same cut as the Phantom one either in terms of how the laces are positioned, but like I said, they do feel more secure than that original Phantom, which I would argue is a nice improvement. Although I wish the tongue was a little bit thicker um, just because I do feel a slight amount of lace bite due to it being so thin on this particular shoe. But like I said, the upper feels soft, flexible from right out of the box. And as far as stretching is concerned, again, you have to keep in mind that the material, the Nike skin upper will actually give a little bit, mainly in the toe box area, but through the midfoot with those fly wire cables, they're just not going to give. So for the most part, the way the shoe fits from right out of the box is the way it's gonna fit for its entire lifespan. And as far as width is concerned, they're gonna be suitable for most people. Again, if you have really, really wide feet, maybe you wanna to stick to something with a leather upper, but for the most part, you, they should fit you quite comfortably. In regards to sizing, I'm wearing my usual size nine US here and the fit and the length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. All right guys, that is it for my review of the Nike Hypervenom X Finale Turf in the Electro Flare Pack colorway. Again, if you're looking for more information on this particular shoe, be sure to check out the review page on my website. That'll be the very first link down below in the description of this video. On that page, you'll find high quality images of this exact pair that'll give you a better idea as to how these actually do look in person, as well as buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you'll be able to pick these guys up below their normal $100 retail price. So again, if you're interested in a pair, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. If you have any questions at all regarding the Hypervenom X Finale, leave them down below in the comment section, and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information down below in the description as well. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, thanks for watching.